Zotwa says to Temba, I'm not talking to you. Okay, says Temba. Don't you want to know the reason? Asked Zotwa. No, my darling. I respect and trust your decision. And that's when the fight started. Last Monday, Dr. Tando Sibanda introduced us to the subject of purpose, and he asked, why on earth am I here? We looked at what purpose is and the pillars to a productive life. He gave us the, uh, the blueprint to finding our purpose. So it is Motivation Monday, and our resident personal development coach, Dr. Tando Sibanda, author, international speaker, and coach is back to equip us with the tools to perfecting and maximizing that blueprint. Good evening and welcome to Talk With Rams Live. Thank you very much for choosing us. We truly appreciate it. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. On all platforms, it's Talk With Rams. Please like, follow, and subscribe to our pages. And I need to say, I have not said it for a number of, uh, maybe for two weeks now, that if you subscribe to our YouTube page and take a picture of your subscription, a screenshot, and send it to admin at Talk with Rams, you will qualify for a 50% discount on Dr. Tando Sibanda's book. Uh, Dr. T, I'm gonna get into trouble saying this because I already have one person who said, but where's my book? But I also have three people who've got their books. So I know people are getting their books. Uh, so don't, don't panic guys, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this thing. We're, we're gonna fix this thing as we go forward. So Dr. T, I just wanted to make you aware that somebody today said, but I don't have my book, what's happening? And I was comforted to say, I've got pictures from people with their books getting accepted and their books are autographed. So we good, good evening to you, Dr. T. Good evening, good evening, brother Rams. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm dark and lovely, thank you, how are you? No, man, I'm super. I've been sitting in darkness here, thanks to Lord Shedding, but I'm uh, glad we're back in time for this broadcast. Yeah. Just in time. Thank you so much for that, Dr. T. I was going to be so disappointed. Mondays are not the same without you. So let's catch up, Dr. T. Let's catch up uh, from where we left off. Uh, it's a bit of a recap. And again, say, ask you, what is Blueprint? Right. Um, Thank you very much for, for getting this going, Rams. Um, remember, the blueprint really speaks of the reason why something is created or why something exists. You know, your blueprint literally clarifies your purpose. Now, everything you see today has a blueprint, whether mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a table, it's a laptop, uh, you know, I'm sure people who are in construction understand this better, that uh, before you start constructing, you need the, bl the blueprint, the plans. You can see the blueprint of what the building will look like, what each room looks like. So literally a blueprint speaks of the purpose for which something is created. And we each have a blueprint. We are not cosmic accidents. We are not mere flotsam or jetsam in the river of life, unable to influence or understand why we exist. Guess what? We are intentionally created beings. Not only are we works of art, we are also artists at work. That's hmm. what it is. Wow. But where do I find it? I mean, is it like, a, could I find it in the winning mindset in that book on page 32 or somewhere? Where do I find it, Dr. T? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the winning mindset, by the way, is, is an exposition of the human blueprint in terms of the mindset. But, uh, okay. but, but, but really finding and perfecting your blueprint is not something we have to go out there and get, but rather something we need to tend within and look our blueprint and unlock as well. Our blueprint is within us. In fact, in fact, perfecting your blueprint has got some pillars within. I know pillars externally of building it now there are certain pillars that can help you answer this question i know a lot of people say to me but but how do i know my purpose how do i how do i know why why on earth i'm here how do i understand my blueprint well there are certain pillars that are on the inside of us and it is it of those pillars, you know, that then gives us a very good understanding uh, of all the elements of fruitfulness and functionality, you know, that's how we understand our ideal self. 
So it is an inward journey, and um, and I'd love to uh, to go there with you today. Well, let's get there, Dr. T, and start with the the process of actually perfecting this blueprint. And and you know, today I'm very I'm very selfish. I, I want to perfect my blueprint, Dr. T. I, by the end of this <laughs> series that we're going to run, I want to understand this blueprint of mine. I appreciate that, Rams, and um, and um, and I hope that our our uh, our viewers and our listeners have got a pen and a paper because I'd love for for each person to personalize this. Don't let this be information that comes at you. Let this be information that sort of works in you and transforms you. So everybody needs to grab a piece of pen and paper, and we are going to do what is called an internal audit of these four pillars uh, 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 that will actually help you to perfect your blueprint. Very, very important uh, that we do that. And, and, so, and, so, and so I'm going to start with pillar number one, right? Pillar number one is for you to understand your blueprint, you need to understand your talents. So point number one, right, talents there. I want you to do a talent audit, right? Mm -hmm. The question then, uh, Rams, is uh, uh, what is your talent? Because it's important to understand what talents you have, you know, and, and what is a talent? A talent is natural aptitude or skill. So then we say, well, he possesses more talent than any other player. I'm sure you've seen, you know, there are soccer players that work hard to, to, to sort of learn the skill, but there are other guys, you know, I, I don't know if you remember a guy called Ronaldinho, naturally talented, oh, you know. Oh, Dr. T, oh, talented. the smiling assassin. Oh, <laughs> Ronaldinho. The best number 10 I've ever seen in my life. Dr. That guy, that guy was discovered. I'm telling you, that guy was discovered, by the way, in Brazil, in a match, in, you know, these are these are by the by the seashore. You, you know, there are these five aside, yes. twelve aside. He was playing in a yes. match. That's how they discovered. It. It's a match where the team won 24-0 and he scored all the twenty-four goals. You know, and they were like, "There is wow. something here." So, so <laughs> I'm telling you, it's crazy, eh? So, so, so oh. sometimes talent is natural aptitude or skill. Where someone doesn't even need, you know, you don't practice too much. There's something that flows from you. It's a natural skill or ability. A person who can just do something. For example, singing well. Some people are born knowing how to sing well. Mm. Whenever you are doing your idols and stuff, I don't even go to audition. I know I'm called for other things. I know there are other things I do well. Singing is definitely not one of them. <laughs> but you know, Dr. T, I don't yeah. think I don't think that's the right thing to do because there's still something to win. You could get the wooden spoon, you know. You don't you don't have to write yourself off. At least there's still a price for singing badly. I know, I know, I know. It was funny. Uh, Zim Zim had a context for Mr. Ackley. Can you imagine, like like all the Ackley guys, and they would win all sorts of prizes. <laughs> so everyone who thought of the ugliest and men competed. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I can understand what you mean, but but uh, but I'm not going to put myself in that in that position with singing, you know. But <laughs> but but it speaks of a natural talent. You did not do anything to have it. You can sing well. Some people are good actors; they can act well. Some people are mm. good comedians. You know, someone still walks into the room and they're just talking, and everybody falls over, and you get new perspectives and you crack your ribs. It, you, you see, that's the definition of, of, of talent, natural endowment. You know, what do you have? What are you caring for us? What did you bring to this world? And that's why I'm saying everybody needs to personalize this for themselves. Look into your life right now and ask yourself this question. What is natural to me? What talent do I possess? You know, some people, some kids run faster than others. Some sing yes. better than others. You know, again, each one of us has got something special that we bring to the table. Right? Before you move to the next point, Dr. T, Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope I'm not derailing you much, but uh, is it also a dangerous thing though, talent, when people then think I don't have to do much because I've got this natural endowment of singing, of juggling the ball, of writing, of, you know, whatever it is, of, of dancing? I, I, that's very that's a very important point too. One of the key challenges we, we have is that when people are talented, they think that 
the natural talent converts, for example, to impact or income or value. It, it, it does not do that naturally. What you are then endowed with, you need to be able to develop other skills that we're gonna be talking about in the next couple of weeks in terms of then what do you do when you are doing an internal audit of these uh, pillars or th these blueprint pillars and you find that, well, I am talented in this way, in that way. If you sit on your talents, you will not go anywhere. In fact, how many people do you know when you grew up who were more talented than you? When you were playing mm. soccer outside there, when you were playing netball, when you were singing in the choir, so many people were so talented. But a lot of those guys who should be having their own albums and touring, a lot of them are their secretaries, you know, their departmental managers somewhere. They are, you, you know, you know, they are doing things that necessarily don't speak to their talents. Mm. You know, some of them have got good jobs, but they don't have fulfillment. Some of them are struggling today because your wealth and, and your fame and your legacy was locked up in your talents, but you never know anything about the talents. See, that's the chip paradox of life. Talent does not necessarily imply success. You've got to add to it. You've got to add to it. Okay, so let's move on to the second pillar. All right, all right, all right. The second pillar, uh, uh, by the way, is, is what is called passion. You need to do a passion audit. So the first audit you, you, you do is your talent audit. What, do I, what am I carrying? Two is your passion audit. And passion, according to the definition I'll give you here, it's a strong and barely controllable emotion. It's an intense driving of a mastering feeling or conviction. So here I'm gonna come at it at the angle of conviction. What, 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 what convicts you, you know? And, 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 and remember, we each have different things that we are passionate about, right? So these are strong indicators of an internal connection between you and that thing. In fact, I will ask the question this way. What frustrates you? What causes your sense of justice inside you if that thing is not being done correctly? What causes that thing in you to scream and say, that is not right, I wish I could fix that? That speaks mm. of particular areas. People have got different areas of passion. Some people see poverty and just something says, wow, no, 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 this is not right. Some people see corruption and they say, no, 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 this is not right. Someone walks into a room and they see the chairs are not lined up. They're like, no, 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 this is just not right. Someone looks at people dressing up and they're like, eh, what's wrong with their sense of passion? That's not right. You know, wh what, what is that thing within you that screams out? when what you are seeing externally is not lining up with your sense of perception internally. That may be number one, an indication of an area of passion. Secondly, what is it that inspires you? What is it that gets you going? For someone, if they are passing there and they hear music, you will lose them. Even if you are saying something important, they, you know, all the attention has gone to where the music is coming from. For someone else, maybe it is dance. For someone else, it, it, it's different things. For someone else, it's color. For someone else, it's, you know, some people are, have just got this thing where they lock into what's happening out there. And the question is that, what is it for you? Because we don't share the same passions. Even identical twins have got different passions. Mm. <laughs> so it's important wow. to understand it's about finding the right key for the right lock, perhaps. So if, if I use that, uh, that uh, definition that you give me, Dr. T, it could very well be that there are people who were born to be politicians because they were driven by this passion to solve the injustices of the world, to make sure that the world is a better place. Well, I can't speak for politicians in South Africa generally, but I'm just saying good politicians. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You see, and again, the other thing, right? That needs to be clarified because people get raised their eyebrows when you talk of politicians. But the political arena and, and being a politician, there is nothing wrong with that. The only challenge is that the, a lot of people that run in that, in that destiny track are not equipped to do it properly. 
So the passion mm. may be there, but if you are a politician, you need to be a good administrator or have good people that do administration that you can listen to, you see? Mm. So the challenge is that, yes, a lot of people really, or some people who were born to be politicians, but because they don't uh, uh, support that, that, that gifting, that passion, with substance and, 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 and equipping, you know, then it becomes a problem. But indeed, mm. if there's something that cries out in you and says, that's not right, that should not be done that way. I need to be the voice of the voiceless. I need to stand up and confront whatever situation is coming. Now, that's a passion. If you, if you are listening to us tonight, write that down and say, for me, it's this, for me, it's that. It's very critical because it's a part of your blueprint. And in all that process, Dr. T, do I have to factor in my own personal values? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, in fact, I, I just need to explain something here on the context of values. Values are very important because remember, Rams, values are the principles or standards of behavior, right? So mm -hmm. these are one's judgment of what's important in their life. So, 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 for example, we say, well, they internalize their parents' rules and values. Remember, values are those qualities which we hold dear and so mm. important in our lives. They speak to what is key to me. And our values, here's where it gets interesting, our values determine our mindset frameworks. Because remember, values, they, they, they form our, 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 uh, the basis of our internal representation meet frames on which our perception and our worldview is formed and therefore our behavior is executed in line with our value system. There are certain things Rams you will never do even if you went to Japan and no one knew Rams Mabote. You will, there are things you will never do because they go against your value system. You are just, it's just not you. There are certain things you will do more than others because they line up with your value system. So your behavior output is consistent with your value system. And your value system very much speaks to your blueprint. Now let, let me expand further if you can allow me. There are three primary types of values, three primary types, right? They are what are called driving values. These are values that enable you to have achievement in your life. Mm -hmm. Where you can set a goal and achieve it. While others are lazy, you get the energy to wake up and say, I want to finish my degree, or I want to finish this skills trade. I want to do one, two, three, I want to build a house. That's a, you, it's because you have a driving value, maybe you value achievement. It's a driving value that gives you energy and it gives mm. you a sense of accomplishment, right? So secondly, there are what are called relational values. These values bring connection into our lives. These are values like, uh, uh, like uh, you know, you, you, know uh, you value friendship, you know, you, you value uh, uh, loyalty, you value, mm. you know, there are people that don't have those values. I coach a lot of people who have no relational values. They are good at their jobs, but they are terrible uh, at, at working with other people because they've got driving values, but they've no relational values. So, so relational values bring connection into our lives. Then we've got number three, we've got purpose values. Purpose values bring fulfillment in our lives. These are the values that allow us to, uh, to serve our generation, to serve mm. others. And as we serve others, we feel that sense of fulfillment, that sense that says my life counts for something. I can tell you are doing this show it's coming out of a purpose value for you and it fulfills you to see people rising up to see people becoming better you know you're not making money out of it you're not making millions out of it but the point is it fulfills you so 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 those are the three primary types of values then you've got what are called neutral values like a mm. car in neutral gear they are there they are nice to have but they don't take you anyway some people just <laughs> value chilling just walk around the country and see how many people value chilling. <laughs> they will defend their right to chill. Walk around and see how many people, a lot of people just, it's a value for them. I don't mind not going anywhere as long as I can just chill with my friends. <laughs> That's a neutral value. It's not taking you anywhere. <laughs> so the, 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 the three values that you, you mentioned earlier, driving values, relational values, and purpose values. Right. I don't need to have all three of them. One could be driven by just one of those. And um, look, I always say that any, for anything to be solid and stand, you need three legs. Anything with three legs will stand. 
If it's a yeah. port, it will stand. If it's a if it's an aeroplane, it, it 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 will stand. If it's a tripod, it will stand. So these are the three primary types of of uh, of, of values that then lead you into 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 what is called a balanced life. So your balanced life framework is dependent on these three types of values. The challenge mm -hmm. is that you find someone only has got uh, relational values and they are not driving values. So they are very good at, ah, how are you feeling today? How is this, how is that? But they don't get ahead in their life. Yet they are mm. good at relating, but they've got no tangible results. So, 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 so it's almost like the chair is like this. It's a nice person, but, but it's not a person you want, to, you, you want to go and achieve things with. Others are good at driving values, but, 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 but they are not nice people. Others have got a sense of purpose. Oh, I wish this could happen, this could happen, you know, this, but they don't have the driving value to make it happen. So you need a balance of these three. You gotta have, even if you, in your top five values, you've got one driving value, three relational values, two purpose values, but you need at least one of each. I see. In fact, uh, from what I have learned about the, our hero that we mentioned earlier is that the value that got him failed in football is that he had an overflow of the chilling value, Ronaldinho. So he would do exceptionally well as a footballer and everything else. He was partying and you know, he'd be really come late to training and all those things. So the chilling value was overwhelming in his life and it messed up things. And that is why, by the oh, way, Pep oh, Guardiola got rid of him. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You see there, there was, there was natural talent a natural talent without an understanding of the value system became a challenge because I'm naturally talented so I can do this thing, but the value of work, the value of teamwork, the value of commitment, just having every, you know, running together as a, 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 a team was lacking, but the chilling value was very, very big. I mean, uh, you know. So, in, uh, in, you know, in, in, dance the whole night and then see what <laughs> In, what, what, what are, Typically, just for people to understand, Dr. T, what are examples of values? Uh, you know, we, we spoke about types of values, but examples of values, so what, what, what kind of things are we talking about? All right, lovely, lovely. So, 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 for example, you can have a value like integrity. Someone values integrity, which means they value a, a, their, their brand state in terms of what they say they do. You know, some people value integrity, some people value growth. Someone who values growth will, will invest in a personal development coach, you know, they will read personal development books. They will go to school. After they finish this uh, this uh, this course, they will enroll for that course. You know, they will generally, you know, when you look at their bank account, you can see the value because that's where they are yeah. spending. Some people will value education. You can see that's where they are focusing. Some people value independence. They don't want to be dependent on anybody. See, these are they, some people value honesty. Even at their oh. own personal uh, to their own personal detriment, they will be honest. Literally, you know, yeah. some people value family. You see, every value, adventure, stop and smell the roses. Every value Rams has an upside and a downside. Maybe one day we just need to do a full thing on values, you know. So, you but, know, and so you know, your value can be a strength, but it can also be the weakness and be the reason why you maybe don't go and get ahead in life. That's a discussion for another day. But these are different wow. types. There, there are hundreds of values. You know, and that's what you need to know your values because your values bring alignment to your blueprint. That's why it's important even to our listeners right now, I would say write down five top values that you have. Five, what's most important in your life? Write it down as we are going through this exercise. So Dr. T, I, I know my talent. I have discovered what I'm passionate about. I'm pretty sure about my values. I, I think I live and to see some of the work of those in the but that's a talk for another day. Do my skills and expertise matter in this process of the blueprint? Well, absolutely. In fact, the fourth, fourth and final pillar, right, in, in addition to your talent and uh, and your values and, uh, and, uh, and, and the other, the fourth one is your skills and the expertise. Now, what, what is a skill? A skill is the ability to do something well, right? Mm. And then expertise is actually the knowledge in a particular field. So therefore, so therefore, it's important for you to know what am I skilled in? Remember, skills may not come naturally. You can learn a skill. That's the point. 
So you can learn a skill, you can learn how to do something until you are particularly good at it. You know, it's that principle of repetition. We learn through repetition. And I remember that other guy that says, well, 10,000 hours into something, then that something starts giving back to you. So that speaks of skill and expertise, like what David mm. Beckham would do. They say, bend it like Beckham. When everyone goes back home, Beckham remains and puts in more hours in bending those shots. And he became known for that. Cristiano Ronaldo as well is also one guy that is very, very brilliant at, uh, at, uh, at that. You know, he really, he really puts a lot of work into, 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 into his skill. But you see, what is the difference then between talent and skill? Because it's important for someone to understand that. Fundamentally, talent you are born with. You are being, you are fast, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are great at this, you have an amazing, an amazing voice, but skill is something that can be taught. It's something that you can learn how to code, how to do this. So a skill is learned, it is acquired, and the talent you are born with. I hear you. I, it, it makes sense to me, and it makes me feel slightly better because then I, uh, I know I can work with those, Dr. T. Uh, no, no. Then... Then my, my, my question then is, or my next question is, is, how do I find what really is, you know, I'm gonna use a, a, a phrase that we use in golf. You know, the, it's called a sweet spot. It, it's knowing where I hit the ball best. How do I, how do I find that sweet spot when I know, when, once I know all these things? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I, I thought we, we, we could actually have titled uh, our talk tonight, Finding My Sweet Spot, but I thought it could be, it could be misunderstood in a number of areas. <laughs> no, no. What, what could be misunderstood, Dr. T, is finding somebody's sweet spot, but finding my sweet spot <laughs> cannot be misunderstood. Okay, okay, I get you. I, I think we're good, we're good. Now, 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 I want to bring it uh, home with, with, with just saying, now this leads to print mapping, which then is the sweet spot. What is your sweet spot? Your sweet spot is a place of fulfillment, contribution, and significance, right? That place of fulfillment, contribution and significant where you feel okay now in terms of my self-concept i am effective here this is where i am now your sweet spot runs is 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 the is the middle point is the junction of these four pillars where your your talent your passions your values and your skills where they all meet right in the middle there that is your sweet spot mm. and your sweet spot that's your blueprint that's your purpose you see, the thing is that a lot of times we sort of bump into purpose by accident, but we never really arrive at it as a very intentional thing that says, okay, what are my talents? My talents are these, my passion is this, or my passions are this, my values are these, my skills are these. Therefore, where they meet here, it's that space where you are most effective. Is that space where you are, where you are really functional? And guess what? You've got energy for days. And I wish everybody and most people could could, could actually find this because the junction of these four pillars runs is your blueprint. That's your purpose print right there. Wow. So, Dr. T, if yes. I have this amazing passion for something, and and I have a bit of talent that can make me get there. And maybe my values are aligned. What you're saying to me is that if I don't have the necessary skills and expertise, I can go and learn those so that I bring the fourth pillar to this blueprint that I need of my purpose. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You see, you see, you see, you see the, the amazing thing is that if you look at the other three pillars, the other three pillars are all internal, right? Yes but you need to be aligned properly so that, so that when you go out to get the skill and the expertise, it is complementing your values, your talents and your passions. You know, some of these guys, you know, uh, I remember when I went to high school with a lot of my friends, guys, you know, there were only two professions, either become a doctor, do medicine. So guys did, M you know, MPC at high school, you know, then you can go to MPC, HB, you know, or go and do LLB, become a lawyer. So a lot yeah. of guys would, go, you would think, no, 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 I'm sorted 
they, I want to be a doctor. So they go there, and within the first two weeks of, of, of uh, uh, you know, adversity, you know, you, you are taken to the mob, you then you've got to see the dead body. A lot of guys came and saying, no, 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 this is not what, what I'm all about, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's because, it's because there was a misalignment somewhere. Once you've got your internal matrix sorted out in terms of my passion, my talents, and my value, then go and get the skills that are consistent with your talent, passions, and values. Remember I was saying last week that, 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 that one of the things that our parents discouraged us from doing was really following this, this model. So they would say, no, 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 you can't be a comedian. Who's going to pay for that? Uh, who's going to pay? Yeah. How are you going to make a living from being a comedian? Well, look at it now. We listen to comedians and we laugh at politicians. <laughs> does it does it also work with other with the other pillars, Dr. T? Would could my values uh, be an impediment to this blueprint where I would have to change values uh, to make sure that I the blueprint is perfect? Wow, that's a really powerful question, Rand. Yes, remember remember values are not. Uh, are not are not a, 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 a cast in stone. You can actually change a value if it doesn't yes. work for you. I, you know, I always speak of this guy that uh, that looked like he had a problem with uh, with alcohol and drinking, and and his wife would always fight with him until they came to a coach like me. And when and when a values assessment was done, his value was camaraderie. He valued friends and camaraderie, oh. but he could only meet. <laughs> at the bar after. Remember, if, you're, if you don't live out your value, you feel like you are missing out. So you would go to the bar to fit in, then you would have to drink with everyone else. But when he changed that value of camaraderie to value family, he didn't feel like he was missing out and his alcohol problem was sorted out just like that. So, so, so again, it's a, you can change a value. A value is not cast in stone. And you're right, you can adjust it. But the thing is, come up with a winning combination. That's the point. Well, folks, you don't always have to hear it here. Just get yourself a copy of The Winning Mindset by Dr. Tando Sibanda. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe on the page, take a screenshot, send us that screenshot on admin at Talk With Rams, and you will get 50% discount on that. And I can promise you the next batch of deliveries are gonna be quick, right, Dr. T? They're actually happening this week. Whoever buys it this week will get it this week. This Excellent. week before Friday. 50% discount, folks. You don't get that anywhere nowadays, especially during COVID. In fact, people inflate prices by 1,000% during COVID. We give you a 50% discount. Do not miss it. Dr. Tandos Wanda, always wonderful having you, my brother. It is such a wonderful, wonderful learning experience for me personally, and I hope for everybody else. No, thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this platform, Rams, and I'm glad we can add value into people's lives thank you so much thank you i was going to end this show by saying happy women's day to everybody who follows the show and i still say it but i'm sad that i'm gonna end it by uh bidding farewell to a uh, great friend and a hero that we all have known for many years bob homozo mabena who passed on this afternoon uh none of us would have been ready for this he just turned 51 i think two weeks ago and released an album also last week and he succumbed to what they believe was a cardiac arrest this afternoon may his soul rest in peace i remember this guy very very fondly and i'm going to share with you one story i used to be a radio columnist for the city press and in the column i used to end the column with what i called boob of the week so i would look out for somebody making a stupid mistake on radio and I would call them out. So Bob had the misfortune of being in the boob of the week once or twice, maybe three times, and a few other people. But he was smarter than everyone else. He, he, he called my bluff. So every time he was on air and he would make a mistake, he would go, oh, Rems is listening. I must correct myself very quickly. So he made light of my, well, not even attack. I was making jokes of the guys. So he made light of it. And, it was difficult for me then to make him boob of the week anytime because he made me uh, realize that I'm, I know you are listening and I found my own mistake before you publish it. He was an amazing man. I, uh, I was privileged to call him a friend and I know his soul is in the right place. He left us amazing, amazing work we can look back on and thank him for what he's contributed to the world of broadcasting 
and media. Tomorrow is Opportunity Tuesday. I shall meet you then. Thank you very much for tuning in, for your comments. We saw you all 7.30 p.m. as usual. And Frederick, thank you, buddy. You felt my heavy body this morning. Something told me something's gonna go wrong. I almost called off the show. So maybe I could see that a, a dark event is coming ahead of me. I'm glad we survived it. I'm glad Dr. T leaves me in the higher spirits than I was earlier in the day. And for me, Rems Mawote, good night and God bless. <laughs>